Hi everyone and uh, welcome to another video. While I'm still suffering with uh, Mallorca withdrawal symptoms, I thought about some technical aspect of my trip that I want to discuss with you. And first of all would be maybe the elephant in the room is of course approaching a difficult trip like Mallorca in terms of climbing and descending with a rim brake bike. As you know, I'm a lover of rim brakes. I was quite dubious because lately the narrative and the technical discussions has been, yes, favoring disc brakes lately. Uh, the new technology is now predominant in the industry, but at the same time moved to bashing quite a lot the old technology of rim brakes. And uh, even if I want to portray myself with a strong look and a confident behavior, I'm quite sensitive to uh, those talks and um, I have to confess I was a little bit anxious approaching uh, the task with my rim brake bike because I never had the experience of such long climb and very long descent the most I've done on the Surrey Hills yes quite technical uh, steep descents but not the length that was causing problems and I kept hearing about burning smell from the rims, the laminating rims, uh, pads consuming at a alarming rate. So in all honesty, I was um, feeling quite conscious about the challenges that I was going to face. It is important to analyze the braking techniques, yes, the lines that you are using in the context of safety because we are on open roads. This is the most important factor of all. When you are there, you're not Safa Bryan, you're not Tom Pidcock, you're not Vincenzo Nibali. You do need to realize that you have to stay in your lane and on the other side, there will be a vehicle that might come from the opposite direction. So all my suggestions, yes, are relevant to me. Bear this in mind, of course, it's just my judgment and uh, everything is in the context of maximum safety on open roads. A bit of background from my own particular experience is I have had the luck of driving now and then uh, powerful cars on the track. Uh, I have had also a powerful motorbike and I'm relatively familiar with what a racing line on a track or on the road might be. Another aspect that might have played a part is that I come from a generation, because of my age, where I wasn't expecting the tools to do most of the job for me. In a different scenario, my first um, camera was completely manual. At that time, I had to take care of the focus, exposure, shooting with film or slides. You had to frame properly, otherwise your photo would be ruined. In that case, that approach will have you concentrated all the time of what you are doing. Same for the cars. My first cars, no ABS, uh, no power steering. You had to know the tools, you had to know the vehicle to get it performed at the very best in terms of brake fade, braking distance. So there was a user input that was necessary to get the vehicle to perform at its best. Nowadays, our approach might not be the best when you expect the machine, the car, the camera to do everything for you. So I guess the best approach would be a mix of the two. How you brake to avoid fade on this long descent proven to me the very best approach for, yes, rim brakes in this instance, but should be the same mindset that you will use for these brakes as well. Because no system is perfect. As we found out, a friend of mine had the problem on his disc brake bikes. So in both cases, physics again count. So overheating is not good for either rim brakes and disc brakes. And it's your job to avoid overheat your brakes. Yes, here we are in, uh, well, let's say <laughs> Mallorca. You can see how the tarmac is very well maintained and we got our cyclist here ready to tackle a descent on the right hand side like a european style where a normal racing line would be coming in wide cutting the apex and going out 
in this fashion. This might put you, if you come in too fast, in a difficult position because you might end up, if you have misjudged the turn, going to heavy braking and potentially getting outside the bend. And if there is a car or worse coming through, you will be in a difficult situation. So my approach was a hard braking here to allow me a space around this section to release the brakes and cool the system off while feathering the brake a little bit at the beginning, coming down a little bit later on the bend and closing on a late apex here to avoid overshooting the bend and staying in my lane. This was to me the trajectory that gave me the most confidence both on the braking side and clearing any obstacles that could come on the other side. You never want to lock the tires because the skid will cause all sorts of problems. And anticipation where the obstacles are coming is mandatory. So early braking, release to cool down, then a slightly late approach to make sure that you are going back in within a safe distance in your lane. What it feels to me like in the cameras or in the cars that modern users tend to rely, maybe in my opinion too much, on the new brakes. Yes, these brakes, because they have quite a soft lever, so they do relieve a lot of pressure on the discs with a comparatively low effort. Yes, they are more comfortable and they feel more powerful. At the same time, might give you that sense of confidence that might put you in a slightly worse position if you get too fast in a corner. My personal advice would be to approach those bends with uh, slightly less speed, not keeping the brakes applied all the way to get them too hot, to make sure that you don't overshoot the exit line. The stress on your arms with rim brakes is harder, so you might want to, you know, go in the gym and be stronger <laughs> to prepare for these uh, old style bikes. I have to say that this technique worked First of all, because I'm here in one piece, so that was a good result. Secondly, I really enjoyed riding, even with the rim brake bike, I never felt that it was uh, holding me back. After the initial assessment, I got confident within the safety boundaries. I kept pushing a little bit more, enjoying my descents, keep checking the state of the brakes at every descent, and I felt that everything was going in the right direction. I went to Mallorca with pads about two thirds, they were not new, and I'm still running them because the wear is much less than I anticipated. So maybe pads now are halfway worn. I checked them out against even the new pads, and I have to say the wear is really, really minimal. The rims do not have any particular sign. All things considered, is a good result for this old bike. In conclusion, guys, to me, the trip was a success. The test of the bike on quite strenuous routes was very, very successful. My Canyon Ultimate performed extremely well, and I'm quite happy that I approached the task with a bit of humility. Next time I'm going to go back on a long descent, I will do exactly the same. Yes, I will try to enjoy myself at the very best, but I would want to stay within the safe limits. Let me know in the comments your best techniques, if you do have tips, if I missed anything, as usual, I might have. I love to hear the comments and I'll try to reply to every one of you. Thank you guys again for watching. I'll see you to the next video. Ciao.